what we're going to cover now is something called LP BAM, which is low power background autonomous mode. So uh, earlier on today, Jeff introduced you to the concept of using GPDMA with something called linked lists. So you can chain functions together um, and automate much more functionality without having to wake up the MCU or, or load the MCU in any way. And as has just been through the various low power modes that, that, are, that are available in U5, showing that we can uh, essentially remove um, power and clocks from, from almost the entire device, uh, but have certain peripherals running in, in some of the very low power modes like STOP2, for example. So LPBAM is essentially a combination of those two uh, aspects. It's um, running in a, a smart uh, run domain, low power domain, and using DMA, but this time um, a, a, another new aspect of uh, the DMA block, which is low power DMA in, um, in, a, in, in a linked list manner. Um, so you can chain functionality together whilst the rest of the chip is essentially stopped. So we've got a few theory slides to go through. Um, some of them will be uh, slight repeats of what uh, has come before, so I'll try not to dwell on those and get us onto the hands-on as quick as possible. But as I mentioned, LPBAM is a, is a unique power saving uh, way to, to use DMA to uh, transfer data from peripherals to memory, but not just from um, peripherals to memory. We can chain functionality together uh, as you saw with GPDMA so that you can read one peripheral and write to another peripheral, for example. And this can be done with the microcontroller and, and any of the other peripherals completely turned off. So we're, we're saving a lot of power by running the rest of the chip or having the rest of the chip in, in a stop mode and, uh, and just utilizing the bits that we need, which is the low power DMA and the individual peripherals we need to talk to. So to give you an idea of how that can be used, there's a, there's a, a I have a selection of examples. This one is uh, essentially uh, interfacing to some form of external um, component like a, a MEM sensor that's operating over I squared C or SPI or even uh, a GPS using conventional UART signals. In this example, uh, we're using um, LP BAM and low power DMA to transfer data from the peripheral into memory. And then when the transfer has completed, we can then at that point wake up the rest of the device, wake up the um, MCU core to process that data. So this is a fairly straightforward example. But we can also use, as you saw earlier on, we can use the ADC, uh, and this will be the basis of the LP BAM workshop um, that we do this afternoon. We will trigger an ADC on a periodic timer uh, <clears throat> and store the, uh, the data into memory whilst the rest of the device is sleeping. Slightly differently, we, we can use the, um, the, the DAC in, this, in a similar sort of manner. The rest of the chip can be uh, in stop mode. Uh, we can um, periodically write values to the DAC uh, used in sample and hold mode, so it holds its output. Uh, and this can essentially drive the DAC in, in a very low power mode. Something else which is a little bit different is there is, um, as Chris B mentioned earlier, there's the audio digital filter components, uh, and this allows us essentially to, to, to detect sound and to do some thresholding on signal to noise ratio. So you can set this up such that the, the microcontroller is, is essentially stopped, it's, it's off, it's asleep, um, but we are still uh, triggering on sound activity. So if there's a, a, um, a detected threshold, so detected sound over a certain threshold, we can trigger uh, and um, wake up um, the microcontroller core once we've reached that particular signal. Um, you can use a, the analog um, comparator component. Um, 
So in this way, we're trying to show that we can use essentially a simple control loop. We can use the analog comparator to, to vary the pulse width modulation of a, of, a, of a low power timer. And again, all of these components you see here are uh, essentially running in, in the low power um, domain whilst the, whilst the MCU is off. We can drive GPIO uh, or read GPIO. So in this way, we could implement some other form of um, communication protocol, for example, just uh, we can toggle LEDs or we can or we can implement simple UR transmissions again in the low power domain, again controlled by um, a link list DMA channel that's triggered by a timer, a low power timer. We can cascade peripherals together actually as well, which is where the power really comes. So we can, for example, here we can um, uh, on periodic, take periodic samples via the ADC of internal temperature or some external temperature, for example, or voltage. Um, once those samples have been um, transferred into memory, they can be then transferred via um, reconfiguring the DMA block to then transfer from memory to some external device. It, it could be external SBI flash or it could be uh, an external host controller, for example. So this is a little bit different to the other usage cases because we're actually cascading together two peripherals rather than just one. So this really kind of shows you the, the power of this technique. So I think um, Anders slowed you this slide before, so I'll be very quick with it, but just to highlight, there are essentially two separate uh, DMA power uh, domains. So we talked this morning about the GP DMA, the general purpose DMA, that sits in the same power domain as the, the CPU and the, and the main buses. And we have the low power DMA block, which is in what we call a smart run domain. So this area in pink here is, is what we would have um, running in stop two mode, whereas the rest of the device is essentially turned off. So we have the low power DMA controller, it has access to um, uh, the, the, the AHP uh, bus and the APB bus, and the peripherals that link to those two buses can then be accessed and controlled in this uh, smart run domain. Now, uh, peripherals in this smart run domain can actually request their own clock, so they can essentially have the clocks turned off to them to save power. Uh, but when it's required, the peripheral can can request the clock um, so that it so that it's able to transfer data, and we'll we'll, we'll touch on that again in, a, in another slide shortly. So this is zooming in a little bit more on the smart run domain, and um, so we have the LPDMA uh, controller here, and this interfaces to uh, it has interfaces to uh, the AHB three AHB bus here and also the APB3 bus. So essentially we have uh, two masters, um, the, the AHP bus itself and then the LPDMA. And there are two slaves, uh, which is the uh, APB bus interface and the SRAM4. So this morning when we were storing our linked lists, we were storing, in, storing them in memory into SRAM4. We weren't using any low power modes at that point, so we could have used any memory, frankly. But in uh, LP band mode or, or, or using this smart run domain, then if we're using stop two, then we have the option of turning all the other, well, we've turned all the other power power off to the other RAMs, so we, we store our link list in SRAM4. And as we go through the workshop this afternoon, you'll see that we use SRAM4 exclusively because this is the one that's still kept uh, alive in um, stop two mode. So some quick summary of differences between GPDMA that we used this morning versus LPDMA. In essence, LPDMA is um, a subset of the GPDMA features. OK, so uh, it, 
LPDMA only has one master port, uh, which is the AHB. Uh, GPDMA has two. LPDMA only supports single transfers, not bursted transfers. Um, and that more, more importantly, there are only four LPDMA channels. OK, doesn't use a doesn't have a, a FIFO. And um, it doesn't support the 2D, addre 2D addressing feature that we touched on this morning. However, this is a peripheral that you can use in the lowest, pretty much the lowest power uh, stop mode. So that's where it's intended to be used. So some of these extra features from GPDMA are, are not, not intended to be used in that type of mode. <coughs> so, how are the various bus matrices uh, distributed across the chip with related to the two specific power domains we've talked about, the CPU domain and the smart runtime, smart run domain? So, um, when you are um, in run mode, Obviously, you can access um, the AP, the HB and the APB, no problem. But when you are in LP band mode, um, you can access down to stop one, uh, the AHB and APB. But when you go to the to the the lowest power setting that LP band supports, which is stop two, then you really are, as we showed before, limited to APB three and AHB three. So this determines which peripherals we can use in this mode because some of the peripherals are on, are, are on different buses. We'll see more about that when we go through the configuration tool. Um, but um, LPB, LPBAM brings its most power saving benefits using STOP2, although you can use it in um, uh, in the other STOP modes, but using uh, GPDMA or LPDMA. So this figure is intended to give you an idea of how the LP BAM functionality uh, is an improvement over a traditional interrupt wake up based um, uh, approach. So using LP BAM, uh, the processor here in, in blue is running uh, at the initial startup, so it configures the uh, link list and it configures uh, the the DMA controller, LP DMA controller, and starts goes into low power mode and starts a transfer. So we have this pink area here, which is the DMA uh, running in in the low power stop to mode. And when you're using LP BAM, you are staying within the low power stop two mode. So you, you get bursts of power, bursts of uh, activity, which is the DMA controller itself and the peripherals. And then only once the transfer is complete, does the uh, microcontroller get woken up to act, to act uh, on the, the, the transfers. If you don't use this low power background um, autonomous mode, then you you can send the, the microcontroller to sleep, run a DMA transfer, but then the micro has to wake back up again to do something with it. Uh, and so these gray areas here are highlighting the fact that um, once a, DMA, a standard DMA transfer um, happens, you then have to wake up the process to go and do something with the uh, with the, the, the transferred data. In terms of clock distribution for this stop two mode, I think Anders probably mentioned um, all of the clocks get turned off in stop two mode except for LSI and LSE, and the MSIK and HSI sixteen can be enabled on request by peripheral. So if they if they need access to the clock they can request access to, to either of those two clocks. And this is this is fundamental in saving uh, power. 
So what peripherals are supported by uh, this LP BAM mode? Well, there's two types of peripherals. Autonomous peripherals um, are the ones that can take part in DMA transfers and they can request to have their clock enabled. Passive peripherals are pretty much dumb in that all they can do is generate a trigger to, to trigger some other DMA process. So uh, perhaps a timer used to trigger an ADC, for example. So the ADC is active because it's actually transferring data across, but the timer is, um, is passive because it's uh, in this particular instance, because it's uh, just, just generating a trigger. And this describes, uh, gives the list of peripherals and uh, what type of peripheral they are and where, where they are functional down to. So you'll see that running in the lowest power mode that supports LP BAM, which is stop two, that the you have a subset of peripherals. OK, and you'll see a bit later on when we get onto the hands on that the tool. Um, only offers you the peripherals that are available in the uh, in, in that mode, um, so you shouldn't be able to try and uh, rec in include a, a peripheral that's not supported. <clears throat> so. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the, there, are, there, are, there are essentially two clocks that a peripheral requires. There's the peripheral bus clock, uh, which is what is required for the microcontroller to read and write uh, data from the peripheral. And then there's the kernel clock, which is what actually clocks the, the peripheral itself. So it, um, it enables its activity. So those clocks, um, whether they're turned on or turned off depends on what um, st stop mode or stop state the uh, smart runtime is in. So if we are in the stop state, then the peripheral clock is off. Um, bus clock is off, sorry, but the peripheral kernel clock that can be off completely or it can be turned on upon request. So if the peripheral wants to actually um, uh, function, then it can request its its clock. In run mode, they're both on basically. Now, if you remember, when uh, we went through Anders' workshop, uh, we turned off uh, debug support in low power mode, uh, and that's important to remember because the debug its debug block itself takes quite a bit of power. So when you're running um, in low power mode, you, you're going to want to turn that debug block off. But because you've turned the debug block off, it means you don't have access um, to the internal states of the, of, the, of the core. It's very difficult to debug. So to make life a little bit more simple, there are three configurable signals that can be enabled uh, in a in a debug mode that doesn't rely on the uh, JTAG connection, um, which will indicate to you the states of the various of the two power domains, so the CPU domain and the um, smart run domain. So there's three signals: C sleep, CD stop, and SRDS stop. And there's a little truth table there to show you how they are active depending on which particular uh, status we're in basically. So these can be used for um, some, some basic debug. And we have uh, a section in the cheat sheet that gives a little bit more detail on this, um, but we definitely won't get time to go through that as part of the hands-on, but there is information there. So if you want to play with it yourself after the workshop, you can do. So, this is intended just to recap what we did this morning uh, for the GPDMA section and linked list section. Um, because we've we've done it, I'm not going to dwell on it. But just to refresh your memory, um, we can use the DMA block in in the linked list mode, which means chaining together individual configuration nodes. So we can have a configuration um, to handle the DMA block in a certain way. Then we can reload it to 
to point to a different peripheral or a different area of memory and and we store those configurations as nodes and we link them together using a linked list okay and when you have it running in circular mode you essentially loop from the last node back to the first node and, and jeff showed you this this morning so silicon vendors want to show their customers how uh, low power their individual devices are, uh, but it's a very difficult thing to quantify. And uh, the marketing departments of various semiconductor manufacturers have great fun trying to say how wonderfully low power their devices are. So just like we, there was for the process of performance in terms of dry stone MIPS um, and uh, uh, other type measure, um, performance measurements, the uh, ULP mark uh, was developed, the ultra low power uh, mark, and this this comes from the uh, the embassy or EMMBC um, organization, and they developed this ULP mark to allow a more quantitative discussion about uh, what the low power features bring in terms of overall uh, low power performance. So there are different algorithms that are used. Um, there's the core profile, the peripheral profile, and then the core mark, which is the overall published uh, figure, which gives you a combination of, uh, of, of performance. So the core profile is the most basic and simple. The peripheral profile, though, this is useful when you have low power peripherals specifically designed to help with your low power performance. So here we're talking about our low power timers, our low power uh, UARTs uh, and the low power DMA, etc. So um, there's a, a test called the ULP Mark Peripheral Profile that allows us to to test those features more specifically. So this peripheral profile, or PP uh, for short, uh, examines the power consumption or the energy cost of using four common peripherals, which is the real time clock. PWM, PWM counter, ADC, and SPI. And the benchmark defines 10 activity slots, and each one runs for one second. Uh, and each activity slot implements a different set of combinations of peripherals and how they are used. Once the MCU has completed its um, uh, activities it can put itself into standby or, or, or essentially low power mode. So um, it's dependent on how long the peripheral is running using these uh, activities versus how long it's asleep. So these are the 10 tests and uh, essentially what happens is um, you, you hit reset, the, the microcontroller starts the um, specific test and then once it's finished its test, it puts, its, puts itself into, uh, into low power mode. In our case, this would be stop two or standby. And um, the tests have different combinations of peripheral settings. So we've got the ADC, the PWM, SPI and real-time real clock. And we, each slot has a different number of um, essentially a different number of configurations. So if you look at slot four, for example, then uh, we take one sample from the ADC at one hertz because there's only one sample. We are clocking the PWM at um, 32K with a period of 255, 40% duty cycle and 100 pulses. And then we're sending um, 128 bytes from the SPI controller, okay? And that's one slot. And for the rest of the time that the micro is not processing that function, it can put itself to sleep. So the PP benchmark as a whole gives you a measure of all of these 10 individual slots. And you look at what some of the figures are for uh, common STM32 families. Uh, we've got the U5 at the top here, and these are the profiles we're interested in. So we have the, um, the profile at three volts and then the uh, profile at a usually defined voltage which is 1.8 volts because that's uh, pretty standard for low power and um, 
got um, uh, why it's two lots of prof profile and user profile. I, I'd, I'd, when I previously read it, I read that as um, pr core profile and peripheral profile, but it's not showing up on showing up on the slide. Uh, anyway, uh, if we if we look at uh, the the figures are at three point three volt at three volts rather than one point eight volts, um, we can see um, there's quite a difference basically. Um, in terms of um, different features, so we're talking today about U5 and we're highlighting low power DMA and this list linked capability. If you're using uh, an older family like L5, for example, then um, you would need to use it in, 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 a, in, in an interrupted manner. So you run the DMA, interrupt the process to process the information, then uh, go back to low power mode again. 